Sprint. At 6.52, it's time now for our Tuesday morning sprint here on Good Morning Northwest. We'll check in with Chief Meteorologist Kristen Walls in just a minute. But first, here's a look at today's top stories. The man allegedly responsible for trying to rob another man in Richland is behind bars. Court documents say Alfredo Cabebe attempted to rob a man who he was supposed to buy pot from. Cabebe allegedly hit the victim with his gun, and that's when the other man fired his gun. Cabebe, a convicted felon, was shot several times. Two kids who allegedly agreed to help in the robbery on Winslow Avenue took him to the hospital. Shoppers are shopping and thieves are trying to get their hands on your bags. The Kennewick Police Department said it's simply a crime of opportunity. Thieves tend to target cars that are unlocked. Police say to always lock your car door, making it harder for criminals to nab your stuff. Volunteers with the Kennewick Police Department will be patrolling the retail areas of the city. They'll be watching for any suspicious people prowling around cars. The Pasco Police Department announced the passing of former police canine Lemon yesterday. According to a Facebook post, canine Lemon died due to a medical crisis. Lemon recently underwent emergency surgeries due to a flipped or bloated stomach. Lemon served alongside Pasco Police for eight years. He retired last month due to illness. Sister, sister, where did you go? So Families from across the Northwest gathered Sunday in Toppenish to remember missing and murdered indigenous people. The event was organized by Sissy Strong Reyes, whose sister was missing for nine months before she was found dead in a remote area of Toppenish. Speakers, including Sissy, say they'll continue to speak out and give voice to the murdered and missing who they miss deeply. Former Seahawk Richard Sherman is helping to cover student lunch debt, not forgetting about his Washington ties. Last month, Sherman's foundation donated $20,000 to Tacoma Public Schools for meal debt. And this came about a week after he and his wife donated items to three food banks in the Tacoma and Seattle areas after hearing that their shelves were almost empty. And NFL fans were treated to yet another classic primetime game during the 2019 season. On Monday Night Football, the Seahawks, on the strength of four consecutive second-half scores, rallied to defeat the visiting Vikings 37-30. They now improve to 10-2 on the season. And thanks to their head-to-head -head tiebreaker with the Niners, Seattle is in control of the West Division. A restaurant staple of Tri-Cities is changing ownership. The current owners of Cedars on Clover Island are retiring after 40 plus years. The restaurant is closed today for the transition. It will reopen on Wednesday as Cedars at Pier 1. They told us the staff and menu will stay the same. Today is a day dedicated to generosity. It's Giving Tuesday. One of the many organizations collecting money is the Tri-Cities Cancer Center. They're camping out in front of the building for 12 hours. The idea is people camp out for Black Friday. Why not do the same for a day of giving? And a Richland restaurant has raised more than $1,600 in two weeks for the Richland School District Tumbleweeds. A Mexican restaurant added a cafeteria burrito to their menu. Half of the money of the $5 burrito goes to students, specifically to their negative lunch balances. Just last week, they collected $555. Meals on Wheels in Yakima feeds senior citizens in need of a hot meal, but it also helps feed those seniors' pets. The Old Mill Country Store is asking people to donate pet food to the program, either by dropping it off at their store or buying and donating it there. Donations will be accepted now through the end of the month. The store is open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday and 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday. And that live look outside from the Legend Skycam Network, Richland's Columbia Point. Visibility is from this view not too bad, but we do have some freezing fog. That has developed once again early this morning with a freezing fog advisory that is in place uh, for Walla Walla, Dayton, uh, Waitsburg. Uh, that'll go until 10 a.m. this morning as you'll see visibilities in Walla Walla this morning. You're less than about three quarters of a mile. Good to go Tri-Cities in the Prosser, but also noticing visibilities down just a bit for Yakima and also for Ellensburg this morning. It is a very cold start once again. Most locations are in the 20s. Uh, 23 in Hanford, 26 in Yakima, 22 in Ellensburg and the one exception Tri-Cities were hanging on to that 30 degree mark. So pretty quiet here locally. Notice the unsettled weather just up to our north and this will be the case for the next couple of days. Most of the weather uh, will be staying just up to our north. So as you'll see here with future cast taking you through later on this afternoon, the rain, snow chances just up to our north over portions of Canada. The rain will get a little bit closer to the area for tomorrow, although we're still going to stay dry, mostly cloudy. It's going to be a little bit of a rainy day up towards Spokane, maybe a wintry mix in some locations. But as we head into Thursday, pretty quiet and dry with a mostly cloudy sky, then we will get our next rain chance in here. And I'm 
calling for rain. Temperatures will be in the 40s, so a little bit of a warm up towards the end of the work week. We'll have a dry start early Friday morning before the rain spills into the area by Friday afternoon. And this will continue on Saturday as well. If you're concerned about traveling through the mountain passes, uh, mountain passes will be near 3,500 feet for those snow levels. So here's your forecast for today. Overall, just mostly cloudy after the fog burns off. Upper 30s, Tri Cities, Walla Walla over into Yakima. A look ahead to your seven day forecast here in the Tri Cities. Each and every day will be about the same morning fog, followed by some afternoon clouds. Rain chances, though, will be, will be building in here Friday and into our day on Saturday. Dry day, though, on Sunday with a high of 45. And even for Yakima, we'll have some morning fog and some afternoon clouds through Thursday. And then those rain chances Friday and Saturday. Thank you so much, Kristen. Thank you for waking up with us on Good Morning Northwest. Good Morning America is coming up next.